So, uh, I don't know why it's taking long to record. Okay. So, as I was saying, we want to discuss e-business. And, and you may ask an obvious question and say, why e-business? Nowadays, especially the challenges induced by COVID-19, they forced the businesses to aggressively de-platform their operations and digitalize. If you are a business which is not actively looking forward how you can conduct your businesses online, clearly you run the risk of being irrelevant. I always say this over and over and I'm sure it is sinking and it's giving the gravity that it deserves. Before I say much on that, I must first perhaps comment on, on the partnership that is Atlant Resources. We, you know, we ended into a, we joined, we ended into a partnership with First Intuition. I'm sure you might have received an announcement on that from Grace. It's a very good uh, partnership because First Intuition is the, is the learning institution which is rated number one for ACC exams in the world. And if you want to know why is it in Europe, in Asia, and they always record high pass rates, it's because though in Africa we are still learning online as it may like this, but we don't have a robust learning management systems where a student can learn 24 seven. And, and, and then in a bid to grow their business like first intuition to spread their tentacles to Africa, they then partnered with Atlas Resources, which is something which is worth cherishing and worth celebrating. Because now we have now partnered with a number one learning institution in the world. So this, it, 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 it boosts your chances now of passing, even though you were going to pass anyway, but we are seeing it's now leveraged because of as Atlans, we are not reinventing the wheel to get to what is best. We have now partnered with the best. And why the Atlans is because you know Atlans always reports good results when it comes to ACC exams. And I'm sure you are actually seeing this from your student groups and, and, and a lot of other platforms. So you have that at your disposal. And it's a matter of you partaking in that. So as Atlans resources now, from now on, actually from August, as we do revision with you, we'll be offering you platinum content. You know that we are a, a, a gold approved learning partner, but now we have partnered with a platinum learning provider. So from August, when you are doing revision, you will now be getting platinum content, not just platinum, from number one learning institution in the world. Now you can say, say, why is it we can't just learn with with them right away is because you know in Africa there's learning delivery mechanisms which we know it suits our context. So we had to to model to, to customize what they have to suit the Southern African context. And everyone in this particular region stands to benefit. Because it's a huge and remarkable investment. You know there's money involved to have such a partnership. You may notice there was an, an, an adjustment to the fees, but you as a student, we said you should not pay the full fees, but we gave, we gave you a discount of 50%. This is the background in which we are approaching this from. So the system is being finalized so that come the 1st of August, every one of you, you'll be on that platform. You, the flyers which Grace has sent concerning what is on offer on those platforms is actually what is what you are going to get 24-7 practice material with lecture debriefs with a lot of auxiliary learning support. We call that scaffolded learning support that we couldn't actually give you under this particular arrangement where you're just having Skype lectures and stuff. And it, it, it followed a, a lot of source searching from ACCA and, and, and the partnership lead to encourage us to embrace such partnerships. And as students, we are not immune. And fortunately, we are the first stream to report, to, be, to partake of that. And you shall actually tell your others what is on offer as you enjoy ex exceptional learning experience from Atlas resources going forward. Uh, so enough of that. 
allow me then to, 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 to revert to today's discussion. And I want you to relax. And I want you even to participate as you relax, because the concepts of e-business are the concepts that you can relate. Now, if, 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 if I'm to ask, what's your understanding of e-business? What, what, how do you understand, what, what, how do you understand e-business to be? Uh, Aldrin, what's your understanding of e-business? I yes, think, uh, I think uh, the use of internet to perform business transactions, that's uh, mainly what e-business is all about. Yes. The use of internet infrastructure to perform business operations or to perform business transactions, that's e-business. So clearly from Audrey's definition, you can tell that e-business involves de-platforming your operational landscape to desist from brick and mortar approach of your market presence to a space presence from a place based approach to a space based approach so that customers can access you independently of your and their location you get that that's a business and and okay so allow me to share my screen perhaps i may be sharing my screen often so that you learn quite a lot from this. <clears throat> so we, we have discussed, we have defined what e-business is. And we said the use of internet infrastructure to perform business transactions. E-business. Right. Okay, so whenever you are now undertaking financial transactions over the internet, so like you are pro processing financial transactions over the internet, we call it e-commerce, e-commerce. So there's e-business and there's e-commerce. E-business meaning you are using internet infrastructure to conduct business transactions. E-commerce, you have escalated it even to include processing financial transactions online. So that's e-commerce. So you can you can see from the definition of e-business and e-commerce that e-commerce is part of e-business. E-commerce is part of e-business because e-business we are processing we are doing business using internet infrastructure, and if that includes processing financial transactions, we then call it e-commerce. So you can actually see that e-commerce, e-commerce is part of e-business. And e-commerce, to, to a large extent, it makes use of what is called electronic data interchange. What is electronic data interchange, if you may ask? It, it's the, it, 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 it involves digitalizing your operations to process financial transactions, EDI, like allowing customers to place orders online, to place inquiries online and you'll be issuing quotations online, processing invoice, receiving or processing payments online, and even, you know, a lot performing online account and consultations and even delivery, con concluding a sale which was consummated 100% online. When you do that, we say electronic data interchange. And it's a common feature of e e-commerce e -commerce where financial transactions are processed online and it greatly makes use of electronic data interchange now let us look at benefits of e-business benefits of doing your business transactions online benefits of e-business what are the benefits of e-business this is so important. So let me list them one by one first, and then we shall discuss them. Like, or let me list and discuss and say capabilities. Capabilities are improved. 
capabilities are improved. What what that what that means is that what that statement means is with e-business you will be able to perform or to discharge your business beyond what you could do if you were restricting your analysis, your operations to brick and mortar, to place. You are able to do what you couldn't do. Can you imagine? As Atlantic Resources, we do have students, some of them from South Africa, some of them from Zambia. Even ACCA is able to offer courses globally. How is it possible that it can offer courses, it can educate everyone on the globe if, it, if everyone happens to enroll with ACCA? It's because it is digitalized. It has embraced the e-business. So your capacities, your capabilities are enhanced or they are improved. You can, you can do what you couldn't do before with e-business. Make no mistake, make no mistake, though face-to-face -face is still fine, but e-business is very, is very is special in that it boosts our capacity capabilities. And then another benefit, so benefit number one was capabilities are improved. Benefit number two is customer service. Customer service. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, please mute. May you please mute. <clears throat> so another benefit of e-business is customer service improves. You know, that, that's what e-business can trust you into, offering exceptional customer experience. When you're doing businesses online, you are able to bespoke or tailor make your services to suit unique customer requirements. Remember, often we used it to have, often we used it to go to the bank, to queue at the bank and to do a simple task like asking for your, your balance, your account balance. You would queue at the bank just to ask an account balance. But nowadays, you know, Banks now have deplatformed their operations. There are now mobile banking systems or mobile applications, banking applications that you can use. You can as well now check everything, every pertinent inquiries that or frequently visited functionalities that would opt to go to the bank for. You can now just access them using 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 the various e-banking platforms, which the, which banking institutions have promulgated. So that's the benefit of, of e-business. Customer service improves. You know, there are now certain customers who will never do business with a firm if it doesn't, if it is not in any way, in some way, one way or the other, digitalized. One thing for sure that I know is you can't necessarily do business with white people if you don't even have an internet. That I can tell. If you are happening to do business with them, you might perhaps be just a government institution where they have no choice. Not a commercial or a private entity. Make your investigation and see. You, you need to digitalize to enhance customer service and to boost customer service. And then another aspect, another benefit that we get from e-business is Customer convenience. Customer convenience. It leads to customer convenience. This one is, is, a, is a very obvious benefit because you guys you are you are enjoying it right now. You know that. You are learning, you are learning as as, as, as you are learning online like this. It's customer convenience. Imagine if we were, if we didn't have this platform of you learning and then government is putting curfews and stuff, how on earth were you going to learn? So e-business boosts customer convenience. How does it achieve that? It uses what is called independence of location, meaning e-business transforms the business from place into space so that a customer can easily access the business wherever the customer is. We call that independence of location. It's a principle 
for the better fruition and continuation of e-business. So there are various ways you can achieve this independence of location if you want to embrace e-business. One of them might be, you know, there are quite a lot in terms of even discharging these lectures and some are equally, some are even teaching online via WhatsApp. We are having our lectures via Skype, via Zoom, via Microsoft Teams, you know, quite a lot. There are various platforms that can be used to, to make sure that customers can access the business independently of location. And that is a remarkable convenience. That's where we are going. That's where we are going. <clears throat> And then another, that, that's customer convenience. Another is costs are reduced. Costs are reduced. Make no mistake, make no mistake, there is a remarkable reduction in costs if you are learning, if you are doing business online, like even if you are learning online. If you look, for example, suppose you, were, you are now working from home, you, meaning you no longer have the need to buy lunch and stuff. You are now working from home. You can just have the warm basket as your meals and stuff. You would notice there's a remarkable decrease in cost. All the traffic congestion, which would go five liters on your way to, say, Westgate from city, all these have been since avoided should you be working from home. Taken together, you do notice that there's a remarkable reduction in cost. Let, let, for the costs, these are not just the costs. I just I'm just starting with the costs you can relate. Costs are either fixed or variable. You know, brick and mortar way of doing business exposes the firm to a huge fixed cost burden. There's a huge fixed cost burden. Imagine if you were renting, say, the entire floor of a building, the fixed cost that you would incur. All these can be avoided by embracing e-business. So there's a remarkable reduction in costs. Notwithstanding what you used it to do, suppose we wanted to advertise in newspapers, to print flyers. You know, we used it to do these, to uh, print posters, hire quite a lot of sales reps, do quite a lot of things. All these can now be automated. You know, e-business brings quite a lot of, in terms of automation, quite a lot. If you do business online, there's a remarkable decrease in costs by automating processes. You know, there's, there's a remarkable in cost. Now, the, you know, if a business does e-business, there is what is called frequently asked the questions. Most of the questions that you would require to you would hire employees and in care overheads, they can now be automated by process, by, by technology and can can be consummated so easily at and lower cost, like autoresponders. As I have said, with our partnership with Open Intuition, as you shall notice, you shall notice quite a lot uh, that you will now be in a position to learn 24-7 and obtaining tutor guidance because we have it pre-packaged for you. So that would be, it, it would be, it would be a wonderful learning experience. And there's a remarkable reduction in costs. There's a remarkable reduction in costs. So you have all that. And then another benefit of e-business, are you not seeing that every, every benefit I'm putting across here, it starts with a C. So by saying benefits of e-business, you can, you can start, you can, you can just say five Cs. Competitive advantage improves. Competitive advantage. A competitive advantage improves. What do we mean by that? We are saying if you if you embrace e-business, there's a remarkable improvement of co on competitive advantage. As for I, for one, as your tutor, I don't think I will even do business with a person who doesn't even have a WhatsApp number, an email. You you in, you you are not in any way getting along with the trends in the modern world, in the millennia. You are not in any way getting along. And I, I don't think, uh, unless you are my relative, I can save your number. In, in, in anything other than that, I don't think I, I, you, there will be any interface with me as you say. So these are things that, that, that boost competitive advantage. 
it, it can you imagine if a bank as of now doesn't have even an, a, a mobile banking platform it requires everyone to come to the bank what will be the market position the strategic position of such a bank in terms of its competitive advantage you do notice that it was, uh, it would rank lower on the competitive advantage scale or spectrum so that's 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 the point exactly what i'm referring to here that embracing e business it you know it it enables the business to get along with the trends we are now in generation z gen z we are no longer in, in baby boomers generation and, and and stuff we are now in generation z this is not a generation of war heroes, generation of revolutionaries and stuff. It's a generation which is networked. And like a generation where you couldn't know what was happening to your neighbor, what was happening next to you. This generation is internetworked beyond measure. If you are doing a business in a generation like this, and in any way you are not embracing technology, you dampen your competitive advantage. That's a very important point there. You know, in this generation, unlike the generation of the 80s and stuff, it doesn't even it's display knowledge to say, I know what a hard drive is. I know what internet is. Everybody knows that nowadays. So in as much as you know all this, so it's all that is required now is to tap into the surmountable advantages which are brought about by this particular generation which is tech savvy and wonderfully internet worked you can't continue to sell something and move door to door and think you are in business in a generation z environment i i i, I we, we don't train such managers this generation is a generation of network marketing you know there are businesses which are thriving based on network marketing like iphone businesses the, the iPhone, I don't know the nitty gritties of it, but I can tell they thrive in the structural, structural setup of this particular generation. They can tap into opportunities presented by this generation and, and, and run a successful business model. Okay. okay, let me take off my jacket. You know, I've closed all the windows and the door, so that, that the heat is now within. <clears throat> so yes, that. Okay. So these are the advantages of e-business. Now there are there are, there are certain items that we need to talk concerning e-business that I feel I need to talk about. Now what are the opportunities presented and challenges posed in an e-business environment? You know the e-business is not. 100% a rosy way of, 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 it's not always consistent with your traditional business models. E-business doesn't actually fit in every business model which was existing before this particular uh, t t impressing of technologies. The first one, the first, what I can say is the first, uh, it's a challenge at the same time it's an opportunity presented by e-business is a is an issue of disintermediation you have to get that right e-business has got an element of disintermediation you may say say what do you mean by that you know if you embrace e-business it results in removal of intermediaries the the the, the the, 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 the channel members between the supplier and the customer. You know, nowadays you can call, because you are doing business online, you can actually communicate with ACC direct. Do you know that is possible? Without even coming through Atlas resources or even through going through your local ACC board, you can actually communicate with ACC direct. You know, nowadays there is com remotely invigilated exams where ACCA can invigilate you itself without necessarily transporting and accommodating invigilators in hotels and stuff, or even get information from the local boards. It, you can write an exam from the comfort of your home. We call that disintermediation. 
you know often we could you could you could come across a company which they say we are agents of ethiopian airlines in other words our business is to sell to arrange travel and to sell tickets for ethiopian airlines but now with e business you can now purchase or book your travel book everything on the phone they are now social media they are now up uh, Android applications allowing you to place your bookings and purchase tickets. All you have to do is to present the number of your ticket or a QR code to scan, and then the, the ticket is validated without even the need to have to have these uh, intermediaries. So can you imagine if your business model was to be an intermediary for Ethiopian Airlines tickets? What was going to happen now? If your business model was to be an intermediary, you would run the risk of getting out of business. Yes, because of this intermediation. So it's a risk to the business whose model is based on intermediation. You have to be an intermediary between the supplier of, a, of something and the customer. You are the go-between. In an era of e-business, your position is not sustainable. Because e-business brings about this intermediation, getting rid of you, so that the supplier is able to communicate directly with the customer. So in the process, it becomes a, an opportunity to the supplier to reduce the need for intermediaries and actively engage with customers. It becomes a risk for the business which is, whose model is on intermediation model. So I'm sure you're understanding what I'm saying. That's number one. Another risk and an opportunity, depending on who you are looking at, is re-intermediation. So I said it is disintermediation, and e-business also brings about what is called re-intermediation. So you may say, say, what are you saying? You are saying e-business brings about disintermediation, e-business brings about re-intermediation. Yes. You know, e-business replaces traditional intermediaries with new ones, with digital intermediaries, like search engines, such as, you know, such as Google. You know, Google. In the past, if you want to know, where can I get this type of, say, raw material? You would have to know from newsletters, from magazines, from radio, from whatever. That's what you happen. But now you can we you can simply be told to Google it up. You are looking for what where you can buy this particular type of maize seed, to potato seed or uh, poultry, livestock, whatever. You can Google it up. You can e equally see it right away on the fingertips. That tells you that these are now intermediaries which are brought about by e-business, which were not available back then. We call this re-intermediation. You know, if you are coming from America and you are coming to Zim and you want to get to Victoria Falls, in the past you would involve the use of a travel agent. You should book the place with a travel agent who would arrange the travel. Um, let you know, you know, the travel agent would then quite do an insight into which are the which hotels are best for you according to your budget and what are the issues on offer at Victoria Falls and a lot of things and you would pay the travel agent to access such services and in this particular generation in an e-business environment the travel agent is displaced by the process of disintermediation because e-business brings Victoria Falls and a customer in America they can now engage directly and how do they achieve that? There is an element of re-intermediation. In other words, there are now travel guides or travel apps, even on, on Android phone, on Android phones. Nowadays, they are smartphones. If your business was to have airport taxis, where you would charge, you know, you you'd 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 charge customers how I many? Okay, next bit, I'm muting you. If your business was to have airport taxis, where you would go to the airport and collect customers and charge them quite a lot of money just to bring them to Miku's hotel, 
because they didn't know where the hell Miku, Miku's hotel is as they get to the airport. But now, if a customer just gets to the airport, they can actually live stream with parents, with their parents in the UK and stuff. Look, I'm at airport and they have now Google, Google locations, which will be telling the customer that Miku's hotel is just 11 kilometers from the airport. So if, you, if, if your business is to bring an airport taxi to such a client and say, I want to charge you $50 just to get to the air, to, the, to Miku's hotel, the client will say, look, my friend, you are, you are telling me you are charging me this much just to get to a place which is just 11 kilometers from here. In the past, customers would not even know that. So this tells you now there is a lot of in, uh, uh, non-conventional intermediaries, which are digital intermediaries, where customers can actually access all the pertinent information that they used to pay for in order for them to do business with you. So e-business brings the issue of re-intermediation. I'm sure you're getting it. You know, at the, my, you know, during my introductory remarks, I said everything that I'm going to say here are things that you can relate. And you know what? This, uh, if, if you can, for those who have been attending these lectures, you now know the tone of Mr. Mpati of your say, that I explain everything from a business perspective. Never think that they say, yeah, Mr. Mpati is a very good SBA or two. It's not, there's no secret to this. The whole thing is, uh, I never explain a business concept in the theoretical terms. That's the whole aspect of strategic business leader. Whenever you know it from a theoretical perspective, but you can't figure out how what you have learned can apply in a real business world, you haven't learned any topic on SBL. So that is the secret. Because you may say, say, we do have your notes. It appears your notes are written theoretical. So I know that. Remember, they are my notes. I am the one who wrote them and I gave you that. Because I was opening a syllabus and going step by step, but I now know what the examiners want. So I divorce myself from the notes through to application. It is what you are here for. As I am applying these concepts to businesses, you know, if you go back to the notes, there's nothing there. There's really nothing there that you say, ah, oh, well, I need to memorize this. You, 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 now, you now know how to apply everything. So you're now in a better position now. You, you, all you have to wait is for the examiner to give you the case study. Okay. Now we want to look at marketing functions which internet can perform. Marketing functions which internet can perform. Functions which internet can perform. Marketing functions which the internet can perform. You know, the, why starting with marketing functions? Why not talking about HR functions which internet can which internet can perform? You know, internet can perform quite a lot. There is now EHR. You know, you can be hired online. You now know that there is EHR like CV people Africa. And nowadays, there's a lot of jobs where employees are getting hired on LinkedIn platforms. All these are EHR. You know, internet can do a lot of things. So if we say e-marketing, if we restrict our analysis to e-marketing, it's because this is what is so pertinent. But internet can, e-business can embrace, its tentacles are unlimited. There's now e-government. There's now e-government. Uh, you, you, you can now remit your taxes via the internet, you, everything to do with Zimra. It's, it's now, you can now interact with Zimra, Zimra on electronic platforms. That's a government to citizen approach. Government is embracing e-business. And nowadays, in certain nations, even parliamentary sessions are being conducted online. That's e-legislation. <laughs> So what else can internet fail to do? Do you know that you can now buy even a watch from Amazon? You get it delivered. Today it's only Thursday. On Tuesday, you get it delivered right at your doorstep. You can do that. 
from as little as five dollars, five US, you can buy something on Amazon, it will get delivered to your doorstep. What else then can a business wait for that they can say they can't embrace internet? There's now e-health, where businesses are now interacting, doctors are now interacting with their clients online instead of clients coming to the doctor for consultations and stuff. There's now e-health. You get that? Um, what else can I mention then? Uh, of course, they are now e-gym. You know, the gym, some gyms, they are now e-churches. Televangelism. There's now e-gyms. Some uh, gym, uh, gyms can now actually have any platform where you subscribe, you pay monthly fee to access benefits on that platform. And you do the gymming at you from the comfort of your home. You buy necessary equipment and instead of visiting the gym, you can equally access the gym from the comfort of your home. There's now e-dating. <laughs> Perhaps that is relevant. You may let, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll comment on, 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 on the dangers of these things. But there's e-dating. Actually, in Iran, there's e-dating site, which is even administered by government, where everyone can actually place requests and the this automatic the, the upon, up, up, upon giving the specifications the the system uh, metadata can link you up and you begin to communicate oh that is so when i say e-marketing what i'm simply saying is marketing is the bulk of what internet now can do but it's not necessarily it's not necessarily marketing where we can restrict our e-business platform to so why is it I, I gave you all these tentacles of what e-business can stretch? It's because I want you to know how versatile now is the need to embrace e-business. How, how pervasive, so to speak, that is the proper word. How pervasive is the need to embrace e-business? You can't run a meaningful business now without, without embracing e-business. And you know, no wonder why you can see, I'm sure here, they are now about four semesters, four semesters where I have never met a student in person, just for, except for a few. So, but uh, as you can, uh, but you know, we always talk because we are doing business online. So that is so important. Okay, so we want to discuss about marketing functions, which e-business, e which internet can perform. We call this e-marketing marketing right you know nowadays you can actually trade on new york stock exchange you can actually even from comfort of your home you can trade on new york stock exchange and get paid your money if you, if you close your market position today tomorrow you see your money credited to your bank account so should you make a profit? Because markets normally they do daily settlement. After you have done your your your, your courses, if if I find time, I I have to teach you what is called current or stock trading. Because remember, as you say, I did CFA. This is this is my area of speciality. I trade in all these markets from the comfort of my home. I actually teach quite a lot of students online how to trade i've got quite a lot of videos which are available from relevant uh, uh, social media sites so what you need to know is there is nothing now from my experience that you can't do online which is which makes business sense so to speak of course there's quite a lot you which can you cannot do online but i'm saying from a business perspective from a business perspective, if a, if a firm which is selling caterpillars can do business online, a caterpillar, can you imagine how huge that equipment is? A firm which is selling a yacht, a 250 meter yacht, can do business online. You know, there, there's a story in the newspapers where they're saying there's, 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 a, there's a company in the UK which manufactures luxury cars, GEV Rolex, I don't know, is it? Royce Royce, I don't know. It, it, it's in the previous newspapers where they were saying someone bought a car and they were alleging that it was a government minister and then the company issued a statement. They said, no, it was just an ordinary person. But off the top, 
the person bought that car, which was the which is like latest model from UK online from Zim. Last week we are talking of a last week event. So which business then that you can say re reasonably I am doing which does not require the embrace of what we are talking here? I'm just giving you examples. Now there are various um, there are various ways. Um, there are various ways, really, you can make use of internet to perform marketing functions. And, you know, marketing functions are known by the mnemonic or acronym, 4Ps. You know, if you are a marketer, whatever you'll be doing is from your marketing toolbox, which is normally 4Ps. But for this purpose, we shall discuss 7Ps. Because normally in the can mining companies embrace e-business, say, the mining part of it, as, as I have said, the mining part of it, that one, that one, that one can, 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 but with time they will, but for now, uh, it requires manual labor and with, with, with the use of, 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 of machines as well. But let me give you the broader picture. We are living in, a, in an era which we refer to as Internet of Things. Internet of Things. IoT. Internet of Things does not necessarily mean, uh, you know, Kudazin, so to speak. No. Internet of Things means the use of gadgets which are, con which are connected by, by, by technology to perform routine business transactions. Put it put in a simpler term, robotics, but not necessarily using robots, but using machines connected by internet technology or internet infrastructure to perform business operations. 15 years or 20 years from now, we will not be requiring human labor to enter underground for mining. Get it from me. 15 years from now or 20 years from now, through this phenomena which we call internet of things, meaning gadgets connected by technology and they can replace persons. We'll be using all these technologies or assets to perform business operations. So they can be automated. When the mining engineer is, from, is working from home and it's a network of gadgets even through down to the mining site performing business operations. And that is the broader picture. That's where we are going. That's where, you know, in, in Germany, there's a bank, huge bank. It's actually the largest bank in Europe. Uh, it's, it's amongst the largest, not the largest. It's amongst the largest. You know what? Huge bank hired 1,800 robots as bank tellers. That was 2017 years back. So can you imagine if you are busy doing banking and finance as a course? What is, your, what is your future like 20 years from now? What is your future like? So what do we want? No wonder why as ACCA we were agile enough to introduce this subject which is called the strategic business leader. We were the first. We were the first to, to reimagine accountancy profession, reimagining the role of a management accountant, a financial accountant. That no, this time... All the major functions which these guys were doing are now automated. Most of them are now automated. So what is their role? Their role is now pivoting towards more of being an internal consultant. Because machines, in as much as they are equally good, they lack one thing. They are not able to synthesize the figures. They can produce figures, but they are not able to communicate or relay figures to those who are charged with governance in a manner which convicts them to act. That's where the role of strategic business leader comes into being. It's an indispensable skill that we are teaching in this particular business environment. So you are equally being equipped. And you notice ACCA is now issuing what we call subject certificate. You can apply for subject certificate to be given a certificate that you have passed sbl that alone can equally have you you can get a job you have a certificate in strategic business leadership 
Not like I have a CCA strategic level. I have a certificate in strategic business leadership. You can apply that from a CCA for a fee. They can give it to you. I'm sure pretty soon they'll be giving this for free. That is a skill which can even, I don't know, but I feel that is a skill which can outpace to, 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 to portray to the employer that you know the skills in SBL, that alone can even compete at par with a degree. That alone, this subject alone. No other way, you can check from the price that they charge. It's at the heart of this particular profession, SBL. Now, now what is it I was answering? I was answering uh, with this. Nyarai, Nyarai said, uh, say mining, I'm sure I've, I've told you now, in the immediate future, it may seem like it can't be automated, but the broader picture is what I have told you. Okay. Okay. Of course, some cannot be automated like sports. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that. You can't automate such, of course. It's not like the, the, it becomes so versatile to eliminate everything. No, it doesn't. Okay. So let us now look at marketing functions which internet can perform. You know, I told you that SBL, it, 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 it's, it's a discursive subject. And the beauty is we have a tutor, Vanoda Nyaya. I make them not go not same, but say, ah, Nyaya for sale. And Perel, you know, who's not Perel? In as much as you think that Perel was Perel. And don't know who's Vanoda Nyaya. So, so, so you be, be, be sure that you can sit there and relax. Because as you say, I'm in a league of my own when it comes to this. Now, um, there is various ways, there are various ways in which internet can help the business discharge its marketing operations. Let's take, for example, let's go by the main piece of the marketing mix, which is a marketer's tools box. You know, when you are a marketer, for you to deliver effective marketing communications, all you have to do is to play around or, or manipulate your marketing mix. We were taught this elsewhere when we are doing courses. Marketing mix comprises of price, place, promotion, product, people, processes, and physical evidence. So there are seven P's of marketing mix. Now, here is how you can tap into the digitalization of business operations and expediently execute your marketing operations. For example, let's say place e-business or e-marketing or internet transforms place into space place into space and i i, I marked earlier and i said this is known as independence of location customers can now visit your business from wherever they are like what we are doing here you are actually visiting and you we are meeting face to face this is called face to face but it's live online so it's a face-to-face -face encounter, but deplatformed through e-business, through e-market. So in, instead of saying we are, we, 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 where, where are you located? We are busy saying we are located in the city center. Nowadays, you can simply say we are located. You can find us on Facebook, on Skype, on on. This is our website. This, that should be enough. Gone are the days when. I mean, soon it will come, it will come to pass to, to end when you will be referring people to a position, to a location. Right? Let, let us talk about product. We have discussed the place, and now let's talk about product. You know, before, before embracing e-business, if someone wants to know, Mr. Mpasi, are you, do you really know the SBL, are you able to teach SBL in a manner that I, that, that I can understand it? Normally, if you look, it would, it, it, it would take me a tall order to convince a person that I am the same for SBL. Because by seeing me, someone will say, oh no, does, me, does this man really appreciate the subject I'm talking about? Does this man really appreciate that what I'm saying here, this subject, I failed it three times. You know, by merely looking at your say, you could not necessarily gather you or convince yourself with that information. And I might not be eloquent enough to convince you this. But in an era of e-business, I can simply say, which subject do you want? Do you want to enroll? I can just send you a link to one of my lectures. 
That would be enough. It was not possible in, a, in, a, in an era way. So to, to, to relate to a customer a product, some, because if a customer comes to the counter and say, do you have, have you, I'm sure you have, you have done such a thing where you get, you need a phone, a particular type of a phone. And you say, do you have this phone? Can you tell me the features of the phone? You know, some, a person will be stammering that you wonder is, are you really the person selling the phone? You begin to wonder, why is that so? Because face-to-face -face encounters may make it difficult for person to relay truths about the product, to relay features, advantages, and benefits that the product is going to offer. It may be difficult in a face-to-face -face environment. But if you are if you are if you are doing it online, suppose you sell phones, these phones. Mine here is Huawei. Suppose you sell these phones, and I want to I, I ask you what are the features of this Huawei? You know I don't know how Chinese came up with this name, but it's still fine. What are the features of this? Phone. <laughs> what are the features of this phone? Online is easy because they can e put a, a video, eight megapixel camera, whatever the RAM and memory space, what, what it can do, what it can do, what it can do. Everything can now be put up in a manner which is you, you which con, which, which, which in, on an interface which boosts confidence of this particular customer making an inquiry, which was going to be difficult if you had to ask a person. You know, if you go to Zimra and say, if you if you go to the front office of Zimra and say, how do you take, I want to form a conservancy, a conservancy, I want to realize wild, wild life, and I want to know the tax implications of my business venture. You may be shocked to hear the person at, at, at a reception saying, I don't even know what you are talking about. But if you now Google, if you go on Zimra website and say you want to understand the tax implications of a conservancy business, you can equally have it online. So e-business helps business to portray and communicate the product features, advantages, and benefits better than what it was going to do, to, what the case was going to be if we were going to do it manually. You know, you may actually say, say that there is a way you are saying stuff like features, advantages, and benefits. Can you go one by one and tell us? I gave you the example of a phone. The features of a phone is mega, eight, eight megapixel camera, the, 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 and a lot of other things. These are the features, like you can immerse it in water, and bring it up without challenges. These are the features. And the benefits. Benefits, I mean the advantages. Advantages refer to what this phone can do. What this phone can do. Those are the advantages. Like now that it is a camera, you, you'll be taking pictures. You'll be taking pictures when you visit places of interest or are with people of interest. You'll be taking pictures, storing pictures because the memory is there quite a lot. These are the advantages. And now what are the benefits of the phone? The benefits of the phone is what you become after exploiting its advantages. What is it that you as the owner of this particular phone, you become after exploiting its advantages? Those are now benefits. So, can you imagine if I was to ask you holding the phone, will you be in a position to articulate every aspect under features, every aspect under advantages, and every aspect under benefits? It might be difficult. But if I now give you to say, can you upload your phone online? You would notice everything will be glaringly there. If they say you take pictures, they keep put a video of those pictures. Quite a lot, so that you will be provoked your interest to be your 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 your, des your 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 desire will be turned into action that's 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 product and we call that a fab approach Audrey. it is called fab approach when you are selling something most of you guys when you are selling things you just sell 
you just sell features of something, perhaps with some few advantages, but normally you focus on features. You get to a car sale and say, I, I, want, I just want to have an inspection of your cars. And, 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 and the rep will accompany you to the car. What the rep simply does is open the bonnet. Uh, are you seeing the engine? Are you, are you, uh, you can see the engine. Then open the door, can you see the speedo? And quite a lot of the interior stuff. And then he's done and saying, ah, okay, if you are interested, you can go to the office. And you, you wonder why is it in the car sale? So these cars are in grass, uh, are in, a, in grass which is of this size of by not being bought. The issue is they are busy selling features. A customer, for a customer to make a complete purchase decision, a customer doesn't want even just to be told the features. A customer needs to be told the fab, features, advantages, and benefits. This makes the customer to quickly translate from having interest, you know, when, 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 when a customer wants to buy your product, he goes through what is called an IDA framework. A customer first starts with having an interest in your product. I mean, attention or awareness about your product. A customer is just aware that there is appliance resources. And then a customer graduates from awareness into interest in what appliance resources does. And after you have developed interest, Continuous engagement will help you to have a desire to engage with Atlans. And the actual act, if the desire bends enough, you then have action. That is a complete contract conclusion with a customer. So the thing now is, if you just sell features, normally you, you help the customer migrate from awareness and interest. If you ignore advantages and benefits, you leave out desire and action unattended. And then you wonder, why is it I'm doing everyone, everything that everyone is doing, but customers coming to me. And in Africa, we, we are quick to spiritualize things. We are beginning to say, ah, oh, this, this issue is now spiritual. No. Customers, a customer is a complete pick, is a complete being. When you are marketing something, you have to be complete as well. You have to features, advantages, and benefits. Can you try to do that from now on and tell me that you are failing to conclude deals? Try. Don't just, don't just give a customer a quotation and go. And say, ah, at least I've given a quotation. A customer can see what I... No, a quotation just puts a customer at awareness and interest level. A desire is not a drive. Action is not a function of giving a customer a quotation. So most businesses, most market, most we are not failing. We are failing to conclude deals because of not yet. So in mitigation, what do you do? In mitigation, embrace e-marketing so that you take your time to properly, to properly. No wonder I like I like the flyers which Grace is sending to your to to, to our class groups. He's saying there's a partnership of Atlas Resources with First Intuition, and then. She's then saying what is on offer. Actually, uh, I, I'm, I'm the one who vets what, whatever is posted. I, and you can you imagine if I'm your supervisor doing that. I, 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 I need a complete picture to be portrayed. I need something which is complete to be portrayed. And this is what you have to be doing in your businesses as well. Well, you may say, say, what is it? It appears you are teaching us like you are teaching owners of businesses. Yes. Remember, at ACCA, when we said this is a strategic business leader, we didn't say this is an, an assistant leader. We are saying leader, not an assistant manager, meaning there's no excuse for professional license. There's no excuse for saying, say, what we are saying is, I am just a clerk. No, we want you to quickly overfill your position and assume leadership, be it in your own businesses or elsewhere. And nowadays, we want you to do that in a digital environment, that product. You, and now you can say you can say you you know you have been you have told marketing mix for years now, and you are saying you are hearing the way it is being said here is something which is new, and this is the level I want to take you to. So I said plus independence of location product, and now 
there is promotion. You know, you can you can promote your products online. Promotion activities, which you would have done face to face, you can equally do promotional activities uh, online through e-marketing. You know, e you can use e-marketing to advertise digitally. You know, there's digital adverts. You can you can have electronic adverts or even a visual advert or written advert online. You know, banner, banner ads. If you ever had a situation where you are busy, you are busy, you are busy um, browsing something online and, and something happens, just pops up. And, and you, you are watching a YouTube video and an advert just pops up. All those, are, they are, all those organizations are promoting their products digitally. They are promoting the products digitally, and it's so important. It's a business. And and but you need to be to be careful when you are promoting your products online. Here are the guidelines for e-promotion. Number one is when you are selling something online and you market it online, because some some say say I have I have a poultry project. I always market it on Facebook. As you always recommend us to do, but I don't get even customers, no even an inquiry, no even a like. I don't get one. The, the issue is, when you are marketing something online, be real, be realistic, because normally off the top of customers' mind, when they see something online, what comes at the top of their mind is there is some element of mischief, of deceit. Someone is intending to steal from me. Because customers are still embracing this e independence of location aspect. So if you put something super flash on the internet, you are selling chickens, but you, you download a, a ch pictures of chicken from Brazil, huge chickens, 3 kg chicken, 4 kg chickens, which you have never come across. And those are the chickens you put up there and say, I have these chickens. Then you wonder why is it customers are not even liking and doing. You know, customers are smart enough. They don't need something which is cooked up. They need something which is real. It is called, it is known as content marketing. When you want to promote, promote with the real stuff. Don't just put something which is fake. No wonder why, as for me, as you say, I, I would, if you want, if you say, say, how can you promote your business? I'm comfortable even uploading this video on you on facebook and like trying to come up with a very super plus fly and put it put up there because customers they need something which is real this is called net ticket that's one point number two customers online they don't want don't negotiate a price with a customer online I said off the top of customers' mind, they think that what, you, what is sold online in most instances is fake. And then you, you have put a price tag of $40. Suppose it's a pair of shoes. You have put a price tag of $40. And then the customer says, I have $28. And, you are, and then you are saying, you can, uh, you, can, you can give me that. It's still fine. You are doing it all, on the phone because the customer is looking on your website or on your display site or whatever social media or something the moment you are doing that in as, in as much as you are thinking you are you are saving the customer you are actually doing yourself a disservice why because you are reinforcing the mindset that the thing is fake don't negotiate a price with a customer online if you feel like you give discounts just write it on that product message on that product to say, buy now and get 5% discount. Don't then begin to say, to negotiate discounts from 5% to 16% through to the point of saying, ah, give me whatever you have. And the person is doing it online. You will not get business from, the, from, from doing that. No wonder why, if you try to promote something online, you then say, we are not getting businesses. It says, it's as if customers want to see us physically. No, there's an element which is called net ticket. I remember at one point I bought, I, I saw I saw a type of lotion which had a caption that if you apply this, you look 10 years younger. You know, as you say, I, I, who, who wants to look old? Can you imagine? The I had to buy that because 
I, I equally want to you to look 10 years younger. But you know, they had missed some information about the, 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 the other substances and glycerins which would go with that product. And before I knew it, I had developed a good buys on my face. You know, a good buy is a situation where your face portrays, relays the message that you're about to die. <laughs> wrinkles of out of order. Only because the message was not complete. So what, what happens is netiquette requires you to be complete with your message, especially when you are promoting your product online. Because customers will equally have issues. I shall teach you shortly how you go about it. So you are going to learn quite a lot. Don't worry. Then I said place product. I'm sure you, you are also jotting down somewhere. Just jotting down. Place product promotion. And then price. You know, e-business helps you. E-marketing helps you to shop around. You compare prices before you make a final purchase decision from the comfort of your home. And like a situation where in the past you would buy something and only to realize that the same product is being sold at a very lower price next shop. E-business, you can display all available shops offering the same good. If the good is of similar quality, you can now shop around the prices and make a good purchase decision as a customer. If you are a firm, you can equally do the same to set an ideal price through e-marketing, that price. Then processes. Remember, we said there are seven Ps. So we are done with four. We are now on processes. Processes. You know, processes looks at how you do your things. You know, it's, it's part of marketing as well. It's one thing to say we teach ACA. Everyone needs ACA. But how do you teach it matters. You can lose customers by the manner in which you teach it. We call these processes. How do you go, how do you go about it? So don't say what we have in the shop is equally what others are doing. You know, a, a restaurant next to chicken slice, it sells chicken as well. A restaurant which is next to chicken slice sells chicken. But why is it customers are queuing at chicken slice and not at all at this restaurant? It's how they cook that chicken. The processes matters. And now when, when, when you are now digitalized, most of the processes where, which would annoy customers can now be automated. Take, for example, DSTV. We now have DSTV self-service features. We used it to queue at, at Avondale there to have the DSTV issues solved. The whole day with your warding your DSTV. And we would think it was fun. But nowadays, look, they have since automated. So e-business automates processes and this contributes substantially to customers convenience and competitive advantage by merely automating processes you get that how you do it matters it's not like i'm selling what customers want but how you are selling it matters it matters no wonder why no wonder why <clears throat> we do we now have frequently asked the questions you know we, if you see customers typing frequently asked the questions, they are saying these are common questions and this is the common answer. And the answer is adequate and is in electronic form so that when you click there, you can see the answer displayed. If you were to call, you would get the shock of your life. You would say, is it how you answer your customers? Because normally, where we needed people and processes, we have now automated them through e-business. You get it? There is now auto responses. You get an auto response. You, you type an email and an automatic response is delivered to you. All this is expediting processes which usually required people. So that's e-business. And then there is people. Actually, processes and people, let us combine and explain it once because they are related. They are related. So there is a remarkable saving in e-business, especially because of the issue of, of, of Internet of Things that I have mentioned earlier, and also automation of processes. Automation of processes where you require quite a lot of people. You can now save. You will see as we do revision next month that 
there's a, there's a remarkable automation that has went through the systems that the, the we had purchased from we have purchased and partnered from first intuition to deliver these courses and it's a remarkable our, our capacities will be of such nature that we can teach even everyone in africa without substantially more people with just few we can even deliver the the, the content there so 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 you have all that and then there's physical evidence, physical evidence. Normally you would see people say, say, if I fail to attend a lecture, how will I recover? If there's no assurance that you will get recourse for failure to attend the lecture, you would not be joining online lectures. You know, if we were doing face-to-face, -face, if, 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 if you don't come, there was no recourse. There was no recourse. But now, look, we are having it online, and if you don't come, we record it, send you a copy of the recording. So there is physical evidence. You can't say, say, I, I, was, I wasn't in your lecture, because clearly everyone who is in this lecture you can, is being recorded. So this is physical evidence. So all this is what internet can do. So these are the seven Ps of marketing. Uh, as I was saying this, you can see I am deplatforming your business. You are actually being deep. You are actually, if you are to start your own business, you will start it at another level. You agree with me? And as, as for you, say, I say what I do. I don't say what is just in the syllabus. We were doing strategic alliances last week, three weeks ago, and performance excellence and stuff about Baldridge performance excellence model. I gave you the video and I said, play the video on Baldridge performance excellence model. You would notice amongst the seven Baldridge uh, criteria for performance excellence is the processes. How are you discharging your processes? If you realize that with this approach, we are going nowhere, why can you improve by, every, by being a, a visionary leader who is agile to transform your competencies by harnessing on others who are already there and partnering. I said it then. And now we have it here. So I say what I do. No wonder why I say, if I'm teaching you, I'm teaching you as, as managers. Then, uh, so that was about internet function. I mean, marketing functions, which internet can perform. Now, there are what we call trends in e-marketing. Trends in e-marketing. So we, 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 we want to talk about what are the recent issues when we, are, when we want to do business in marketing. There's an element which is called Internet of Things. I was, I was always saying it, Internet of Things. Oh, let me say trends in e-business, actually, not in e-marketing, per se, for me to be broad. Trends want to be to be broad with my art. There is Internet of Things, IoT. And there is an element of uh, there's an element of big data. And there's an element of disruptive technologies. Disruptive Internet of Things, there's big data, and there's disruptive technologies. Let me explain these three. Always, you 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 had me mentioning Internet of Things, and I I was mentioning it in passing and describing in passing. Allow me just to have two minutes describing it and how the firm can benefit from it. Internet of Things describes the situation where gadgets are connected using internet infra infrastructure and they can be automated to perform business functions. This is now what is obtaining. So it, it, it can even work in manufacturing firms, but it, 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 yeah, especially in manufacturing firms and even in logistics. Take, for example, Amazon. 
Amazon, yes, it, 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 it operates largest space in terms of warehousing and stuff. But all those, because Amazon is an, it, it, it's an e-business platform. It's, that's the greatest, the largest company by market capitalization. And how is it so? Amazon deplatformed its operations completely to, to e-business. That's what it does. And warehouses, so if you order something on Amazon, for example, warehouses are manned by people, but to a large extent, they are manned by machines. Your order activates robots and everything, which, which is connected by technology. And the, your order is even processed and sorted, even without physical human input in, in, in some of their sort of sophisticated warehouses. They have connected gadgets to consummate in order and deliver it to customer. Even to, you know, be activated, are connected. If, if the order is processed, DHL is activated by the Internet of Things without even human involvement. To, and, and, and the product will then be shipped and, and, and delivered to you. Of course, that will then involve people. But notice how substantial part of their business is automated. I have given I have given an example of robo, of of robotics in Germany, Spengs, notwithstanding other quite a lot of other robotics that we have. That's IoT. So in what way IoT, of course, has got human resources implications, cultural implications, or rep if you are a firm which has established a reputation by working well with employees, taking employees' concerns into account, and a lot of other stuff. Embracing IoT may have behavioral implications, human resources implications on employees, but that is the immediate effect. But the broader picture is you save a lot of overheads. Your processes become efficient, and this may play in better customer service delivery and boosts your competitive advantage. That's IoT. Now you understand it. Automating gadgets to discharge business operations by using internet. Now, uh, there is number two, which I've mentioned, I said big data. Big data, you know, big data describes data, which is highly voluminous, high, with high variety and with high velocity. So these are called the three Vs of big data. I'm sure you have come across this when you're doing PM, but if you're exempted, let me say it as if nothing has happened. Big data describes data which is with high volume, so there's a high volume. Data with high variety, meaning composition of that data is so varied to the extent that you can't make meaningful use of it unless you have got analytics software to decode the information from big data or to analyze information from big data platform. And it has got high velocity. Velocity refers to the extent to which data changes the end. That's velocity. So big data is, is high velocity to the extent that it is often described as viral. You know, people would say it has gone viral. That's how, that, that, that how it, uncontrollable dissemination of it. That's big data. Now, what are big data platforms? In other words, in which platforms then do we find big data? We find big data like from World Wide Web, from the website. You know, it, website contains a lot of things. It's a big data platform from various sources. And it's quite a lot in terms of velocity. We find big data in, in social media sites like Facebook, Twitter. You know, it has gone viral on Twitter, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on what. All these are big data platforms. We also find big data on search engines like Google, like Firefox like you know quite a lot of other search engines uh, you know in Ch the chinese ones i don't know i don't know them by name but they have their own there so those are big data platforms if what is contained on google you'd notice it's quite a lot what is if you google search anything and 20 pages will line up that page one of 64 
you know, so we are talking of, we have got 64 pages on Google containing what I've searched here. So this tells you that these are big data platforms. So you may now say, say, you are right, because the concept of big data is now, in, is now a contemporary term in business circles. But in what way does it really make business sense to have big, to know about big data? You know, big data, what big data does, it needs what is, even YouTube is a big data platform. What is contained there is quite, quite massive. It's a big data platform because it's a social media site as well. So if you want to take, to take advantage of big data, you need what is called big data analytics for you to benefit from big data. Oh, let me, perhaps, let me open a website. Let me open a website and I want, I want you to, to notice something. Can, you, can I open a CCA website? A CCA global website, which, which, we, which you all know a CCA Global, and if you don't mind, allow me also to open Atlantis Resources website. Uh, that is, if, if if my data permits me to have these two running. Okay, <clears throat> so you have these. <clears throat> you have these. So let us let us start with with. Okay, let me start with, with this one, Atlant Resources website. You know, the website on its own is a big data platform. Quite a lot of things are included in this particular website. And they, they, those who visit the website and, and, and quite a lot who interact with the website, they are from various backgrounds and diverse interests. And the impression which the website has on visitors, it's quite a lot. How then can we make use of a big data platform. So what we do is, if you if, if you have a website, because you may say, say I have a website, but I don't even know how I can unlock value from having a website. You are telling me that contained within the website because it's, it's part of a worldwide web, it's part of a big data. So oh, you have said Facebook and stuff is a big data. So here's the deal. If you post something on Facebook for you to realize benefits, it's not necessarily about how many likes did I get on Facebook? How many comments did I get on Facebook? No, no, no. That's not the issue. What you do is you need what is called big data analytics software. Like if I post in row for ACCA at Atlas, then I said on Facebook, what I need is to have analytics software which generate intelligence about impressions which that particular post had on a big data platform like Facebook for my decision making. Because I can't be like always going back to Facebook to see how my, my, my post is performing. So what I do is I buy a separate software which is called big data analytics software and I codify it with my website and link it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever there is. So if you come across Atlas post and you just happen to take five seconds looking at it, whether you have liked it or not, the analytics software will give us data on that. And depending on the money, on, how, on the type of the software you purchase, you can purchase what is called a software which goes up to third degree. So what does it do? That software, it will tell us that, Nyasha, you have viewed our Facebook post, whether you have liked or you have commented, nothing. The time you took whilst you were engaged on that post, when you, when you were scrolling, that alone it will tell us. So if we have purchased a third degree, a third degree analytics software, it it will tell us, it 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 will tell us or even send those impressions again to your first line of connections, 
second line of connections, meaning your connections and their connections, to the third line of connection, which is the connections of your connections and their connections. So by your impression, but those analytic software are expensive. No wonder why Facebook would then say promote your post. When Facebook is saying promote your post, they are saying make use of embedded metadata or of embedded information containing analytics, which software, which Facebook has as tools to promote your advert. No wonder why when you're browsing or going through Facebook posts, you may actually see even if in your posts, on your posts, you will see a sponsored ad. In your posts, there's a sponsored ad there. This is now metadata. Someone purchased or boosted the post in Facebook. Because Facebook is a big data platform, data in it alone is of no use unless there's an analytical software. So they purchased an advert and made use of Facebook tools, which is now, suppose it's a second degree tool, meaning it tells your friends and their friends that you are engaged in this post. So as, as, so as long as you are saying, ah, wait, which post is this? And you spend five minutes glaring at it or, or 10 seconds. You are actually engaged and helping the analytics software to even further its purpose. That's how you make use of big data. So let, I, 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 I know I said it in a manner that need detoning. Let me put it now properly. I said big data is data which is high volume, meaning on its own is of no use in terms of volume. Big data is data which is high variety, meaning composition contained in that particular data is from various sources, so that you can't manually spend time to find what is relevant on your own, no. Big data has got high velocity, meaning the pace at which big data changes the end. The pace at which big data changes the end is so fast or so huge that it is at times described as viral. That's big data. And now what, how, why knowledge of big data is important? Knowledge of big data is important, number one, from transparency perspective. If you know that there is big data out somewhere, be transparent. Your Conduct must be conduct which is which is expected of you. No wonder why if you make a scandal, suppose I am a director here and I happen to make a scandal, I tarnish the name of Atlas into total disappear. Should someone take a picture of me and put it on a big data platform? So big data, no, if you are a director and you know that they are big data, make sure make sure you are transparent and also your conduct is of such nature that it puts the interest of the business first. Otherwise, bad conduct, if, if distributed on a big data platform because of high velocity, it goes viral. You get that? You know, giving examples, there were, you know, there was Delta Airlines. It's a UK, it's a US airline. At one point, you know, in, 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 in aeroplanes, they have a system that if the crew don't have a chair, they can just select a passenger at random to say, you have to stay behind and come with, that, with the next plane. They pick you at random for the crew to have a seat. Suppose they, they made a mistake. So at one point, there was a doctor visiting a patient in that Delta airline, and they They've selected that person to stay behind and violence ensued and someone was recording while they were beating a doctor. They were, they were beating a doctor. And you know what? It was well before COVID then. And that small clip went viral to the extent that Delta Airlines lost 20 billion in revenue for that quarter. Can you imagine? We lost 20 billion in revenue because of a viral five-minute clip where crew members were harassing a passenger and there was a boycott for that until they had to compensate and issue an apology and a lot of things. That's how viral things can become in a 
in a big data environment. No wonder why we say it's a high velocity. Now, there's, there's a restaurant in Kenya where in 2017-18, Mark Zuckerberg visited Kenya. I'm, I'm sure you may recall. And he was given whatever, was it pup or what, with a huge fish. That fish was quite huge. You know, you know the restaurant, if, if, if visited by Mark Zuckerberg, if, and you are told to serve him, of course, you put a fish, which is something else. And then they managed to take a picture of Mark Zuckerberg with that fish. You can Google it up. Mark Zuckerberg with the fish in Kenya. It is. That restaurant was, you know, it was in a despicable place. It was not even a hotel or a three-star or anything to write home about. It was like in, in, in the heavy industry. And it was just a, a surprise visit. They just saw ministers with Mark Zuckerberg and security team clearing the way. And they grabbed a picture of Mark Zuckerberg with that particular fish. And that place now, investors flocked to that place and refurbished the thing. And that restaurant, that place alone, the, the guys who were selling those cuisines, they sold that to investors for $68 million which was something with assets not even more than $500. The whole place, because there was Mark Zuckerberg there, was sold for $68 million. Why is that so? It tells you the viral nature of something if posted on big data, so it can be a source of opportunities and a source of problems for a business. You know, we do have people who are just creating scandalous stories and posting them on big data platforms like the mighty tees, more well, mighty tees now, a, a bit more professional. The Chapel or Linda and Bev, the Endimuri, those, and you know how they are growing. If, in as much as you say their publicity is bad, but look at how many infamous, you know, infamous meaning those who, are, who want to associate with bad things, how they flock to that. The whole thing tells you that if bad people can make use of big data to boost competitive advantage, firms can also make use of big data to boost their competitive advantage because big data platform accepts both. Big data platforms accept famousness and infamousness. Aldrin, I want you to check the definitions of these two, firm, two words and post them in, this, in the WhatsApp class group later that you can accelerate your way on a big data platform from famousness or from infamousness. Unfortunately, we, we just say these guys are infamous, meaning they want to be known for bad reasons. They want to seek publicity. They want, yet they are making use of big data platforms and we are just folding hands. Yet big data platforms accept famousness and infamousness and is a platform for both to go viral. And in so doing, you can have your market presence, you can boost your competitive advantage, and you can improve your transparency and your reputation. So that's how you can make use of big data. Now, the issue then is, say you have said it well, we now understand that part, which is quite cool. How do we really, how then do we really bring that into an actionable way? Here's how we go about it. To bring it in an actionable way, you need what is called big data analytics. Let me repeat. To make use of big data, you need big data analytics. Big data analytics. Analytics software. This big data analytics, it helps to interrogate big data and then generate intelligence for decision making. It's a software which then generates intelligence for you to make decisions from big data platforms. So you can see, if you come to Atlas website, you can see there is Facebook here, there is Twitter here, there is LinkedIn here, there is WhatsApp here, all these are big data platforms. So if we post something on Facebook and you, there is an impression we get to know that you, you spend five seconds or 10 seconds, depending on the software we have in place. But how this, how which data it generates, I can't 
I can show you from this uh, user interface. You can only see it from the back office of the Facebook, of the website. The, the back office is what the administrations will be now be working on. Where, what is the geography of people who are being impressed with what, what we post? Are they in Zambia? Are they in Zimbabwe? And in which part of Zimbabwe? Are they in South Africa? And which part of South Africa? And what is their age group? What are their interests? Everything of that sort is generated by big data analytics. So, but you pay for that software. You don't just get Facebook, they sell it. Actually, they are sold. One way of just paying for it is just to promote your post. You know, people post things on Facebook and they don't want to advertise, but you can only pay just $80 to advertise. 80 US dollars. Can you imagine the enormous benefits you get by tapping into existing big data analytics software, which will generate intelligence for you? Um, another, another is, suppose I have, suppose I, 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 I want to see, I share something on YouTube, and I want to see how much the YouTube is performing. Say, you may ask and say, say, is what we are teaching us examinable? Yes, there are exams where you'll be shown a screen of a, of a website and you are told, oh, what do you need to improve it? I just want to show you something here. Suppose I, I this is the YouTube video for your, uh, screen, your, your, your YouTube for your say, because you are used to it, let me open it. You can see here that we are making use of Big data analytics. This is analytics software. You know the YouTube. If you open your YouTube, it doesn't open like this. But this one is your sales YouTube. So it tells you that here is the data, data which is being generated. For the last 60 minutes, four views. For the last 48 hours, 222 views. And then quite a lot. So subscribers are so much. Most of the views are from Facebook, and it's incredible. Engagement rate is incredible. And then all these are things that you can actually see. Uh, this is video score, 31,7 out of 100 or percent. We call it search, search engine optimization score, meaning this is what is required for search engine optimization. And Anything that is required on this is there. Like total views, 6,000 is for this video. And then Zimbabwe, ETC, 67% increase in subscribers, ETC. We have all this data, all this data, all this data, and you have it. I wanted, I opened this. I want to, you to know what I mean by, by, analytics software it's a separate software so here is you and me you just post something on on youtube and think that it will generate it will just generate views on its own you don't even know who are where do i get people who are viewing this particular video where are they from etc but you can now tell that there is a separate software you need to purchase, which is called analytics software, which in turn get your big data platform, in this case, YouTube, to generate data for my decision making. So I don't even know, I need not to bother, where I need not to go to the videos themselves. All I go to is for the analytics, and in the next video, it will improve. If you cop, if, if you comment or express disappointment, I will know from the analytics. And the analytics will then tell me what to do next. So analytics software, they help me to make use of big data. So as a company, you can have equally the same thing. So you can see here that they is telling me that all these videos are not monetized, meaning for now they are available on public. We are not selling them. But you can equally monetize these videos, meaning with time you shall notice that the, all these videos will not be accessible to the public. They will be made private and monetized. So you 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 have that, and you can only access them if you are in class. So all this, the why why is it telling me to stop monetizing them now? Like the vid uh, the the it's vid IQ, meaning 
big data analytics on these videos. All right? Notice, monetization enabled, not yet. So if, 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 if we then realize that, no, we, it, it, we, 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 like with new partnerships that we are entering into, like with first intuition and come, you will notice that some of these videos, which are all available for free, will not be available for free. Pretty soon they will be maintained into private. But you may say, say, did you make this decision on your own? You have noticed, I can't even make such a decision. There is big data analytics software, which will be in turn getting my big data platform and generate intelligence for me. So it will tell me that by now you have to monetize it, make them private. Because people are rushing to these videos, make them private and let them be accessed on subscription. All this is what, what, what you need to know. Oh, you know, as you say, uh, you can see you are now being taught by your say as business people. <laughs> uh, you, you, are, you can see, you can see from these examples that you are now being taught, taught to be practical. So what then does big data analytics do for me? Notice, here is what big data analytics do for me. Number one, you now know what it means. This is what it does for the firm. It provides, provides intelligence for my decision making. It provides intelligence, intelligence for decision. Notice, it is providing intelligence for my decision making. Number two, provides insights. It provides insights. There was no way I would know that this is how the videos are performing. It provides insights into the, into the product is perf market performance. Product is market performance. Because I can't be, I can't be, it provides insights into product is market performance. For example, suppose, suppose I, I come here, I want you to notice um, how, how this provides insights into product is market performance. If I come, if I come to this, suppose these are my videos, I don't even want to know how these videos are performing, who is viewing them and stuff. We need this when we are now sharing flyers and stuff. So I come to analytics. This is the analytics. Analytics is now is what I get. The analytics is, uh, is is now what I get from big data, big data platform. So you can see, this is the analysis of the big data platform. So it tells me in a uh, audience, who are they? Where 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 are we getting most of these interests from? Where are the students who are interested in our videos? Some not those who have not subscribed are more than who have subscribed. We are getting more interest, watch time from uh, from unsubscribed than what 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 those who have subscribed, and most of them, 64% are in Zimbabwe, South Africa, 1.3%, and females, 63.9%, males, 36.9%. You know, it is saying see more, see more, even the age groups. So all this, I can't get all this. If I don't have big data analytics, this this is what I'm telling you here. So in business, it's one thing just to say, oh, say I, I post as well on Facebook, but I, I'm not getting any returns. People will say, oh, nowadays there's Facebook, there's WhatsApp, there's this. I'm doing equally that say, but I'm not getting any result. Yes, because those are merely big data and platforms. Intelligence and decision making requires you to have big data analytics. So you can see the nature of the insights which the analytics software provides. And now, if what are the benefits which are provided by big data analytics? They provide. in the product is market performance. Another point is big data analytics 
Oh, so you agree that I teach what I do. No wonder why you hear people saying, same person knows SBO. Not, ne not necessarily I know SBO, but everything that I teach, I've never taught you things that I, that I have no real-time encounter with. All right. Provides insights into, right. It helps the firm to carry out sentiment analysis. It helps, it helps managers carry out and analysis. You know, you can you can even get sentiment. You you you, you realized from what I what I told you that it tells you males in which age group. A lot of things you can get it from this. So even if you, you can tell that, it can tell us that it's now time to open a branch in Botswana. You can tell if we know that from, uh, from in Zim we started with so much and from the analysis we are getting, the percentage is, is migrating more towards Botswana students and less towards this. Remember, we do teach ACC, CIMA and stuff, so if, if, if we I am, I am, I'm, I'm just showing you big data analytics for ACCA videos. We have the same for SEMA videos by the metadata, by the codings that we do. And you do notice that if we, if we know that, oh, the graph is pivoting towards this, we can make, a, we can get sentiments in advance. And you know, when you get sentiments in advance, what then do you do? You do it this way. Here is how big data analytics help you. It then helps you to anticipate changes in consumer tests, anticipate changes, changes in, in consumer tests and preferences, in consumer tests and preferences, preferences for what purpose? If, if, if it helps you to anticipate changes in consumer tastes and preferences, uh, what, what then do you do? It, you, you know, the firm then, five, the firm then proactively offers, offers new products to into the op, offers new products to the market ahead of competitors to the market to the market ahead of competitors you get that i can because i am now being assisted by big data analytics I can beat the market. We call this beating the market. Or beating the market. To, to, to make a, a decision to my benefit ahead of others because of the information which I've gathered from big data analysis. What else? It helps the firm make better locational decisions. It helps the firm make better locational decisions. It helps the firm data locational decisions. Locational decisions. You can tell. I showed you there that the big data analysis is telling me where are my customers from. You know, it can even tell me. I can know without even asking. Where do you stay even in Arari? Which part of Ferrari do you stay from this analysis? By merely you playing my video, just playing the video, not even, not even liking or subscribing, by merely playing it. Because there is analysis there which tells who is playing. And, and because you are already on YouTube, it has got data about you. Depending on the veracity of the analytics software, it can even give the meaning the fact that you spend some time looking or playing on, on the video, the impression that you get, it can even notify your friends. But that those, those, those analysis, analytics are paid for and they are expensive. We don't have those. But this, 
this is why you, you realize that companies like Econet, companies like, how is it they continue to grow, they continue to grow and expand and mitigate. The reason is they have got financial muscle to have robust analytics software to even co compete with a company which is in America, with a company which is in UK. They have such a muscle. No wonder why such companies have got a vibrant marketing division, a marketing division which has got the same number of employees with those who are in finance, and you wonder what are they doing? Yet everyone knows there's market, there's economy. No, you are now seeing it from here that they do have robust analytics software. Them, them now, ours which I'm showing you here are nothing to write home about. Companies like ACCA, those ones, they are gurus in this area now. ACCA now, uh, it's, it's, it's like kudos in that area. How many times have you received interviews? Do you, how many times have you received questionnaires? Where you were feeling questionnaires, they know about Mr. Mpaxi more than I know myself as a tutor. From you students, they know it. You know, they actually know every, even if, even what I'm thinking to do, they will already know. Why is because they've got intelligence about colleges, they've got intelligence. All the social media platforms we use, they, they generate intelligence from all that, primarily from you students, the surveys you give them and, and a lot of other stuff. So that they make a decision informed. They make an informed decision. Um, so there you go. I told you, you'll be manager you will start your own business by the time we finish sbl if you don't i'm not your tutor so i said it helps the firm to make better locational decisions so we can say etc it is now understand big data so we have done this part internet of things i have done big data with you yeah we are we are we are we are doing trends in e-business and now there is disruptive technologies. Disruptive technologies. If, 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 if I may write the subheading again here. Now, what are disruptive technologies? These are technologies, as the name suggests, which disrupt. They are technologies that if you don't want to embrace them, it's at your, you are putting your neck online. If you don't want to embrace disruptive technologies, the risk they pose to the business, you are putting your very survival as a business at risk. Can you imagine? We have all these evolving technologies for online learning. Imagine if, if as a college we are still saying, come to our college, we are still conducting face-to-face -face lectures. We don't even want to embrace Skype, like even a very free software like Skype. We don't want to embrace it. Zoom, we don't, don't want, my teams, we don't want to embrace them. What would be your position in the market in light of all these technologies? They disrupt, no matter how you were known, no matter how you were known, say, oh, I'm a guru in this particular subject, no matter how you were known. But if you don't embrace disruptive technologies, they displace you as a market leader and establish new ones. That is a very, very important element and it's a very source of risk associated with e-business. And when, it, when there is disruptive technology, it doesn't want a gradual embrace. It requires a aggressive embrace of that technology. You can say, oh, there's disruptive technology, so we have time to embrace it. I told you that you, suppose you were a travel agent. You were busy writing flyers, magazines, newsletters, a lot of Telling people where Omadu lodges, Azambezi lodges, what is offered there. So you would come to an airport and establish an office where you're busy telling travelers, you have got your agents, who are telling, yes, what we offer. That was your business. And, come, and then you would load passengers into your nice cars or buses and bring them to Mikus and say, Mikus, look, as your travel agent, we have brought you, we have brought you 18. 18 customers. So what is our commission? So you do have commission arrangement to say your commission is 20%, your commission is what of the fees. And you would prosper under that business model as if nothing has happened. Now look at what suddenly happens. 
There is now GPS location, locator. There's no GPS. You know, you, 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 your, your shop is, is now known all over. Okay? If, if, you, if you go to Google location and type your shop, like, like Muhammad Musa, it's there. Everyone knows where it is. Okay, everyone knows where it is. Choppies, everyone knows where it is. Atlantic resources, everyone knows where it is. So if your business was to, if your business was to transport customers and to do quite a lot of funny, funny stuff, it being your business model, the technologies displace you overnight. There is now smartphone applications where people can actually stream the Azambez Lodge for everyone to see, and they can even have videos of that, and it goes viral when they are at Victoria Falls. And a lot of they will say location. The video will be told location. If someone wants to know where the place, where this place is, they just click on that, and they are told what what are the services they offer. They just click. So what now is your business as a travel agent? Clearly, if you are in this line of business, as you say from this particular lecture, you need to think other way. You need to think to reimagine sustainability of your business. You have to close your eyes and reimagine it. Otherwise, it doesn't work out that way. You get that? Okay, so there you go. So that's how disruptive technologies work. So now you can ask and say, say, are you telling me that disruptive technologies are bad? No, they are disruptive, but eventually they become sustaining technologies. You know, we were so reluctant to embrace even online lecture, live online lectures like this. But now look how happy we are. We are now sustained by these technologies, but at their inception, they were disruptive. If we were to start, if we, if we were to stick to our guns and say, we, we are known to be teaching on the board, that's what we are known for, we would be out of business by now. Never to be remembered also. You, don't, you will be hit, and you don't even remember from which angle you were hit. That's how disruptive technologies work. So, learn now, if you are asked this one, suppose board members, uh, we ask you and say, you are the management consultant, tell us, we have heard of disruptive technologies. What are they? Can you have a presentation slide for us? Here are the disruptive technologies. So I'm giving you your presentation slide. That's what you present. Number one, disruptive technologies, you know, they violate violate existing business models, existing business models. That's what a disruptive technology does. It violates existing business model. How you do business is violated. How you do business is violated. You know, I, I, I was hearing my daughter in the passage when I was coming to my study room here. She's great seven, but she was tell, telling me that they are now starting lectures. And I said, now. And she said, Daddy, it's the new normal. Can you imagine? We are hearing such words from grade seven. It's the new normal to learn online. Because that's what the technology does. The existing, so to say, our, our school is Christopher Columbus boarding school. Here are the rooms. Here are the classes. Here are the and you are busy showing facilities, grounds, and stuff. Those were, were, attribute, were, were, were unique selling points prior to this disruptive technology. Nowadays, someone is simply saying, I teach physics and chemistry. I have 24-7 data connection, and I can demonstrate experiments on videos. They just download videos on YouTube and share with, class, with the students. And that person alone is able to get 100 students without buildings, without grounds, without anything, and can charge three times what the school was charging. That's how business models are violated in an era of disruptive technologies. Another is they, dis they disrupt or they... they uh, displaces leader 
and establish new ones. Establish new ones. You know, that's another feature of disruptive technologies. They, they displace the market leader and establish the new ones. We, 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 we used to know that Bill Gates is the world's richest person. We used to know that. Until recently, where Jeff Bezos just came up, you know, Jeff Bezos came up with Amazon app, an application where you would order everything on that app. It's integrated with suppliers and everything. So you can say you can order pizza and you say you need it what? It will be delivered to your doorstep. It will be delivered to your doorstep in the state that you have ordered it. You can make, you can make, you, you, what, you can, what you can do is you can make it a recurring purchase so that every morning it will be delivered. Or, you know, it's, it's quite cool. The, 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 there is now internet of things that I had said earlier. You know, Amazon now supplies fridges, bins, you know, the dust bins, the rubbish bin, which are integrated to your Amazon app. How do they go about it? If you put eggs in your refrigerator or in your pantry on their particular compartment to say, I have put bacon here, the fridge will scan the bacon as you are putting it there. You, you, you order groceries with your phone. Your phone is, is integrated with the software of the refrigerator. And as you are putting things in the refrigerator, they are being scanned. So if, if, if I order black label juice, for example, I, I get my black label juice. I put it in the refrigerator. It is scanned. When I drink it and throw the can in the dustbin, the bin scans it as well. So that the bin will communicate with the phone to place another order. That's Internet of Things. And all these are Amazon gadgets, which are proliferating in American households. So even someone is asleep, the gadgets will be ordering goods on their own. You throw something in the dustbin, it's scanned. The message is communicated to the phone that inventory in the pantry has been reduced. And at some point, you, you, because the Amazon app requires you to set your order points, it, it places an order without your input. And before you know it, Amazon was worth one trillion by market capitalization. The first company to, to get to such thresholds. This tells you how disruptive technology works. Can you imagine any a house with such? You know, they are manufacturing cars which know for on their on themselves that they need to pay and they place an order on themselves. Admire, am I have you ever heard of that? That there are now cars like that. Liz, Tesla. Yes. That's where we are going. So imagine you are busy stuck and say, I am selling oils. I know my customers. And if you are not known by that car, where then are you going? So the system that they are giving, they, it integrates with your bank accounts and everything and with the suppliers as well. So if you are a supplier, you say, I know my traditional customers, and yet everyone is buying that type of a Tesla car, which knows its own suppliers of fuel, of oils, of everything. It knows its own suppliers. And you are busy saying, I deliver to my traditional customer. Yet everyone in the neighborhood is buying Tesla with such a disruptive technology. So what does it mean? It means disruptive technologies violate business models. It displaces you as a market leader. And again, it creates new value chains and displaces the old ones. It's new value chains and displaces old ones. Value chains, you know, we can say value chains slash supply chains and displaces old ones. A feature of disruptive technology is disruptive technology is they become sustaining technologies if embraced. They become sustaining sustaining 
technologies embraced. They become sustaining technologies if you embrace them. I like that part. You know, today I'm sure you, 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 you registered for ACCA, but you didn't figure out in what way ACCA is different from my degree. I know you know that. Some of you that just did ACCA because you thought employers, they need ACCA. It was a voluntary effort to do ACCA. I am passionately telling you that that voluntary effort was inspired by destiny. Because this is where everything is going and, and it's not being taught in, in these courses, in academic courses. You now appreciate the reason you did ACCA and you now appreciate in what way ACCA is not an accounting profession in this particular Gen Z where all figurative stuff is now automated. Don't even have a zeal that I want to be an accountant. After, after, after ACCA, I want to be a chatter. I want to know. Ah, uh, be a business person. Be a business person. This is what we are teaching you to be. Accountants, you hire accountants. Yes, you hire accountants. A CCA, we are teaching business people of the day. We have reimagined commerce, reimagined industry trends, reimagined the general direction. What are the firms which are failing? What are their shortfalls? Firms which are succeeding? What is it that they are doing great? And in what way is a CCA capable of producing a professional which achieves just that? And clearly, such a professional is, is not a professional who just know IAS 36, IAS 41, agriculture, biological assets. Ah, clearly that's not the whole. Now, what others can do now if you can do a CCA with that in mind? That one is, is, is just an executable thing on the go, whilst you are actually achieving what is it that a CCA has to offer. You get that? I'm not saying don't work for firms. Don't do that as well, because these are some auxiliary benefits of doing ACCA, but it's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to establish vibrant personnel who can shape the future of commerce, the future of industries. All right. And then, um, so what is it that I'm saying here? I'm telling you that they become sustaining Don't fear disruptive technologies. They become sustaining technologies if they are embraced. So as a general rule, all technologies start being disruptive. As a general rule, as a general, in general, all technologies at their stardom, they are disruptive technologies. But they, they, eventually, they eventually gravitate being sustaining technologies. They require aggressive embrace, not a gradual embrace. They require aggressive embrace, not gradual embrace. So you have the, you are learning quite a lot of skills that if you are not careful, you begin to challenge your bosses at meetings, at workplaces. That's not the purpose. That's not the purpose. When you learn skills that you know, you can tell that, hey, what I've learned here, it appears my boss doesn't even have a clue of what I'm learning here. You also need to learn wisdom of how to relay knowledge that you have gathered. You don't, you don't get promoted by showing off this, but by, by intelligently relaying this to the bosses. Even if you know that your boss didn't know what you are learning, you, you communicate it as if it is coming from your boss. Always do that. And that's the quick way to suck to your promotion. Not unlike a situation where you say, oh, our business with the direction we are taking. You are now saying, oh, you are now saying as if you are a teacher to your bosses. No, no, no. I can only say that because I'm a teacher. But if, I'm a, if I was under someone, I communicate if, even if the person has never mentioned it. But I may say, you, do you remember what you say back then when you were saying some businesses are excelling? I may find a way of doing it so that I always gravitate myself to a position of recognition, not by domination, but by intelligence. Okay. I'm, I'm teaching you trends in trends in, in, in e-business. I had said 
a disruptive technology. I have limited one, which is called cloud computing. Cloud computing. Now, nowadays, they are, they are, there is an element of cloud computing, which is an approach to offer low cost data storage. You know, there are people who, who, who used to be employed as database administrators. You know, companies would have an IT department where they would put a huge server, a machine of this size, and they appoint someone like an, an IT officer, an IT administrator with a team of database administrators. And their roles would be to give urgent permissions, access rights to those who are using the the, 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 the network the system and this is be the server you log in you get cables all over so those roles were prominent and they are still prominent but they are quickly phasing out don't don't allow your, your child to be trained as a database administrator because nowadays there's cloud computing where you, you don't even need all those people you don't even need the server you don't even need data communication equipment no it's now lower cost data storage. And it, it's integrated in, in space, meaning storage is unlimited. All you have to do is to buy, to buy extra space. You, you buy cloud space. Now, Amazon has got the largest cloud space. No wonder why this company is growing it and it, it is always ahead of the game. Amazon Web Services. 80% of all websites in the world they ride on Amazon Web Services. They, it bought the cloud space. You know, Google is now on cloud, Google Cloud. You know, Google Drive, you, you know that. The, that Google Drive is, is leasing space from Amazon Web Space. So just imagine how many have got Google accounts. How, how many? So Amazon is like a, is a monopoly in the cloud computing world. And it, it, once it started, it captured that. Whilst people were, were yet to wake up to that, they were still saying, I need my SAP. I, I need SAP software from South Africa. And SAP would bring a server of this size with a lot of funny, funny computers and cables and everything. And before you know it, SAP was charging $10 million for their system, $3.6 million, depending on the agents or users of that system. Before you know it, there is, and it was expensive because on the hardware side, now there is cloud computing. It is still cloud computing, but there's another animal here in its head, which is called cloud accounting. There is also cloud accounting, meaning very soon we will cease from having Pastel. Do you know Pastel accounting? Do you know QuickBooks? Do you know Sage? Whatever you call it, it's now migrating to cloud accounting, an accounting package on cloud, where the owner of a shop can run the shop with, with just two salesmen, without a bookkeeper or anything. All you have is your phone and your printer connected through internet of things. A customer can pay online via education what accept, it has got a pay now feature, accept the printer prints the receipt and the customer collects the goods and the the cloud accounting system integrated with the phone account puts everything. Monthly, it's a matter of printing reports without even having an accountant. Everything is done on the phone just is given an interface, meaning customer facing activities is what the owner only needs. That's where we are getting. So what then is the role of the accountant? It has to be the role of the leader, not of the accountant. Okay, um, that's another trend in e-business. Now, last discussion item. Remember, we are wrapping it up at nine because we started at six. Last discussion item is ways ways of generating generating traffic to the firm's website. Traffic to the firms. How do you generate traffic to the firm's website? Clearly, we give it a term, this particular, this objective, we give it a term, and we call it customer relationship management. Customer relationship 
customer relationship management, a CRM. So what are the objectives of CRM? The objectives of the CRM are simple. They cover customer acquisition, customer acquisition, they cover customer retention, customer retention, and they also cover customer expansion. C customer acquisition, customer retention, and customer expansion. This is what we, this is, this is basically what we need when we have a, 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 a digital platform. A digital platform should achieve just that. You can say, oh, say what you've taught me today has inspired me a lot, and now I want to have my own website. And, and then after six months, you say, say, I did exactly what you told me, but hey, I found, I, I created a Facebook page. I created a YouTube account. I did, but I'm still not able to unlock value from this. How then can I navigate this and the rewarding terrain? Never mind. You have your say on your side. What you need to do is, it doesn't end there. There are certain principles you have to observe. To attract traffic to your website or to your digital platform, whatever e-platform e you are using for conducting your e-business and communicating with customers, we call it a digital platform. If it's an online banking platform, it's a digital platform. If it's your, on your website, like a CCA, that's their digital platform. If it's on something, that's a digital platform. How can you attract, retain, and expand customers? Meaning, continuous engagement and the relationship with customers. How do you achieve that? There are principles to be observed. So let me show you the principles to be observed for effective CRM. Principles for effective customer relationship management. We call these six I's. Six I's. I's, meaning the actual I, six I's. Not, 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 not the I, no, the I. So we have one. Independence of location, independent of location two, interactivity, interactivity three, individualization, individualization. Or integration, integration, six, structure, just restructure. So these are the building blocks for you to acquire customers on your digital platform, retain customers on your digital platform, and expand customers on your digital platform. By digital platform, let me repeat, by digital platform, I am simply saying that which you use to communicate, to engage with your customers or which you are now using as your primary mechanism of discharging your business model in a digital world. That's a digital platform. What is our digital platform as of today? It's like, say, how do you conduct your lesson? We conduct on Skype. That's our digital platform. But nowadays, we now have a very world class to stand with from vestige. Let's say it. Yeah, it's, it's quite world class. It's quite world class. I used it from Mr. Pat only. You would, in that particular platform, we have videos from 
Oh, of course, you all say videos because you love them most. They are there, but they are all equally other videos. We can expand even to have Chinese videos to cater for those students as well. So that, that's that's quite cool. I, 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 let me not talk about that. Let me say, let me talk about, <clears throat> let me talk about these principles which you have to observe for your digital platform to attract, retain, and expand your customer base. Number one is individualization. Oh, I, I, let me go by the order that I gave you here. Independence of location. What does it mean? Independence of location means the, way, the digital platform must be accessed from the, by the customer wherever they are. Wherever they are. Meaning, meaning, if a customer comes to your digital platform, must be like he or she is in your shop, in your office. People post things on Facebook and think that it's a digital platform. If I see a picture on Facebook or a, a poster on Facebook and a poster on a billboard, in what way is that different? In what way do you say I have impressed the e-business by merely posting on Facebook? Isn't it just a, a, pic, a poster on an electronic thing? You have to, to make sure that you convert it into a digital platform so that you can interact with engage a customer independently of location. Like what you are doing here, I can ask a question and you can communicate. This is a digital platform. And like a situation where I posted that I, I teach SBL, SBL on Facebook. In what way does that really... You know what? What the customer was supposed to do when, meet, when meeting you face to face, make sure that the digital platform has now become that moment of truth. A customer say, ah, I want to see Mr. Pat. If I see him, perhaps I'll be helped. And then Mr. Pat says, I can only be accessible on Skype. That Skype must be a moment of truth. The very thing the customer wanted to see by visiting me physically must be obtained on Skype independence of location. If there's a gap between that, you develop a lot of frustration that the issues of doing business online doesn't generate results, yet it generates only that you are not observing the principles. You are thinking that putting a poster on WhatsApp and you don't engage, you don't we have a mechanism of call to action, that issue which would require a customer to do what the customer would have done yet, the customer meet you in person, but independently of location. How do you go about it? Preliminary issues to enhance independence of location include things like uh, how your website looks like. Your website must be, co must be accessed by commonly used search engines. If you ever type the website for a film, so suddenly you get it to the extent of saying dot org to finish dot com and, and stuff without anything being populated, like suggestions of that website. And clearly, if I'm the one typing it and I'm getting to the end of the website without any population of suggestions, I begin to feel, does this company really exist? Does this company really exist? So independence of location requires a website or digital platform the company is using to be easily accessible by commonly used search engines. That's number one. That's, that, that, that commonly used search engines are what customers are using away from you. And you need to ensure that your website is easily accessible. Another thing is uh, the domain name must reflect what you do. The domain name of the website must reflect what you do. The, like AC, www.accaglobal.com. This ACCA Global is what is called domain name. It must actually reflect what you do. Now you may say, say, what about Atlas Resources? Does it reflect what you do? You need to know. The name Atlas Resources, you say I was a garden boy. I had a company 
which did landscaping all throughout all Mount Pleasant. If you if you move a drive around Mount Pleasant and stuff, you see my billboards, Atlas resources because we, had, we, we, we didn't destroy them. They are dotted all over. You go to Pomona, you go to, to Vainona, Mount Pleasant uh, Sports Club. You see my video, my, 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 my. I was well known for gardening. Can you imagine your say was a garden boy? Was a garden boy. That's where Atlant came from. And all, all this is a product of someone who was a garden boy. I could tell you every plant by me looking at it, even the price I would tell you. This one from Cuba, I would order flowers from Cuba, from South Africa, from Cape Town, from, we would do this. Little did I know that at one point, I would be, it's like whatever I do it, oh, I do, I do it, and everything that then joins into the other. I, enough of that. But the point I was saying is, the domain name must reflect what you do for a customer to access independently of location. You get that? Then let us proceed. Next, it's individualized, it's interactivity. Interactivity. I want to, I'm going through what you must do on your digital platform for it to be interactive. I showed you these websites already, that they are social media plugins. So if you are visiting Atlant's website like this, you can what you can send us a message on Facebook, on Twitter, on, on, on LinkedIn, or you can send me a WhatsApp message. Here, you are on a Facebook, on a, on a, on a website. If you click WhatsApp, it, 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 it takes you to my number. As you can see, this is my number here popping up. So this is my WhatsApp. Why is it this is so important? It's because it's because you have to make sure that your digital platform promotes interactivity because a customer is an engagement being. For custom for you to to draw customers to your business, you have to create a platform for engagement. If a customer just does business with you, but there's no mechanism for a customer to talk to you, even to inquire, even to even to share experience that the customer had with the network. Notice nowadays we are in a Gen Z, Generation Z, a well-networked generation like never before. You should not do your business as if you are in a generation of, of, of liberation or war heroes. You are in a generation of people who are engaging in a revolution. You are in a generation of people who are tech savvy and stuff. So your digital platform should embrace just that. We call that interactivity. No wonder why you see, let me open a CCA website because I have opened it as well. Let me show you the features which makes a CCA website quite cool. Interactivity. I want, I want to show you there is, um, Various ways here which can promote interactivity. If you go to the bottom, here there is LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. They contact us, send us a message. You get that? And all the social media plugins which promotes interactivity. And then big stories, newsletters. Uh, you have all this, or they always ask you to participate in surveys and stuff. All those are tools to enhance interactivity. Now you may say, say, tell us how our question will be like. In your exam, we actually ask you how a website can be improved to attract customers. 10 marks. We will give you a question like that. So, as part of your answer, you don't just say interactivity and move on. Because if you say interactivity, you confuse me more. You should know that interactivity is a generic answer, which is telling you that you should break it down into something actionable. What are the actionable stuff we can put in place to minimize problems of our, uh, associated with our website? So number, if we say interactivity, you say there should be social media plugins like WhatsApp, 
Twitter, Facebook, etc. embedded on the website so that customers can communicate because this generation is social media networked. And another point is but on interactivity, the customer should, the company, the digital platform should generate newsletters or, or you know, communications from time to time, even asking customers to, perform, to, to complete questionnaires or interviews about their experience about the company. How else can you promote activity by having frequently asked questions embedded on your face, on, on your website? So a frequently asked question feature or tab is an interactive plugin. Because if I get to frequently asked tab, I am actually talking to the company. It's like they, they are anticipating my questions because of their intelligence gathering. They've anticipated what I would ask and they've provided solutions. So we call that interaction. Interactivity also involves having auto responder making sure that as customers interact with the customer with your with your digital platform there's something like thank you you let your digital platform be quick to thank customers and to do quite a lot of other things you get that and i'm sure you like it are you not seeing the answer that i'm saying now is the correct answer not just saying it be interactive what, what, what do you think a manager would, would know what, what, the, what the heck that is? So interactivity, I'm saying it's a principle. It's not something actionable. You have to break it down into something actionable. Then there is another one, which is individualization. Individualization. We are wrapping it up shortly. Don't worry. The topic will be done. So it's quite cool. Individualization. What do I mean by individualization? You know, individualization means the digital platform must appeal to the generic needs of unique visitors. I mean, to the unique needs of visitors. A website must not be like a newspaper, like somewhere. If I want to get to the jobs section of the Sunday Mail, I have to browse through from page one until page 11 where there is their jobs. If a website is of such nature, it, it defeats the whole purpose of being a digital platform because it, the customers don't have a plenty of time for all that. A website must be individualistic, meaning if I'm an individual, I must access what I want. So how do you go about it? You, you, one way of making your, your digital platform individualistic is to put menu items on your digital platform. You know, when we say home, our qualifications, employers, learning providers, members, students, affiliates, professional insights, these are called menu items. So it's like you are in a restaurant, you need a menu, you need the lunch, you need desserts, you need, you need to get a menu that suits you. So all this, you know, they could have just have this in a single file so that you scroll down until you get to where you want, but that would be clumsy and that would not provoke engagement from customers. So how do you, how do I make my website or digital platform individualistic? And remember, in our exam, you shall see an exam where a website picture is taken and given as an exhibit, and then you are told how to improve it. The MD has commented that there's a lot to be improved on that. And then you wonder, I thought an exhibit is something written. It's just a picture of a website. And then they go, go to exhibit number three. You wonder, where do I get four marks from this? You, you get not, more, not just have plenty of marks from that. When you get to a website where there are menu items, the purpose is to make it individualistic. So if you come to Atlas website, if you know if you want to know our background, if you want to if you want consultants information like tax consultants, management consultants, we have this. Why management consultation? Because as you can see, as you say, I am a strategic business leader. So that's what that's the way I focus on in most of the instances. The other consults they are done by other personnel. Exam coaching. If you come to exam coaching, you need to know which course. It's not an element of just saying exam coaching. 
If you need ACC, you go to ACC. If you need everything, you go to to all other course through to the end. Resources, e-learning, a lot of other stuff. But this particular e-learning badge is now deactive because we have partnered with first intuition. So we are no longer going to use this. So the reason we have all this is to make it individualistic. We can also say, put your name and email and submit to subscribe. All this is meant to, to have individual communication with the visitor to our Facebook, to our website, to our digital platform. That promotes engagement. Coming to a CCA website, you notice how a CCA website is configured. There is my account. Why is it we have secure login credentials? If I click on my ACA like this, let me close that one. If I click on my ACA, it's opening. You would notice it has got secure login credentials. This helps you as an individual with no one or even in a group of people, you know, if I put in my username and password, it's protected at an individual level. So you are free even to put your bank details. You are free even to put, to, to, to share personal information with a CCA. You are free to be individualistic and engage by having secure login uh, portals. Uh, I mean, uh, individual portals with login credentials. So this is how you make the website individualistic. Another way of making individualistic is having personalized communications. Personalized, you know, when ACC is communicating with you, Nyari, it, say, it says, dear Miss Nyari. It doesn't say, dear student. You know, all that is done on purpose. You know, can you imagine if you want to communicate with, if you receive, Seven, suppose you receive seven messages from a CCA in a, in a month and all messages are just said, dear student, dear student. You know, as, as, you, as you get those messages, the, the less messages, the lesser you engage. They are like Econet messages. Now, nowadays, Econet is now you're putting a name. People will now say, oh, it's an Econet message. Oh, it's an Econet message. Ah, that, that's their message. But the moment Econet begin to say, dear Colin Pats, oh, you, 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 in as much as you are used to deleting, you, you don't just delete. You begin to read and delete and to read it. So they are trying to be individualistic. So when you are sending messages from a digital platform to your customers, make sure such messages are personalized. Don't just send a message you say dear customer it's not it's not a good message personal messages they promote in you know in personal messages which are not individualistic they create resentment i'm not saying econet messages are not but you know you agree with me that they at times overdo them by not being individualistic. If they want me to engage, why not mentioning me by name? They have my details. So you have that. It's an area of improvement for them. I, I'm sure one way or the other they will play the video. You know, the, my videos, <laughs> they are recommended from all over. They, the, there are some areas where I'm getting these videos recommended. Uh, at some point, the, the ZPC, Zimbabwe uh, Prison Services, they were, were having a seminar and they played a snippet of my video there. Then I was told, and I charged them for that, of course. So, 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 so you have that. Okay. Uh, so continuing. Ah, before I continue, so you appreciate, you now appreciate what I mean by individualistic. You, I don't want the word individualistic, individualization is the answer. I need you to, to be principled on individualization and then come up with something actionable which we can codify our website to be individualistic like having menu items which appeal to different generic visitors to our websites like for acca if you want to if you are a member you go under members if you're a student under students if you're an employer under employers 
not just to have everything at once so that you read it through until you get to where you want to get. No, no, no. Such a website is not individualistic. Uh, you know what? I'm teaching you to be managers. Today you have learned a lot. Uh, you can now see, you, perhaps you may be wondering that the, the stuff I was getting from my say was the stuff I could just get from a textbook. It was a stuff that I could even, I came across at universities, but perhaps I, it was not that detailed. But today you are now getting the stuff that an ACCA member of today must have. This is what we, and as you shall see, every question paper is this. Now you may say, say, that do questions, are questions on this really examined as e-business? No. They may, I was giving you how they examined. They may say, what are the impact of disruptive technologies? What are the benefits from having big data? Present a presentation slide on the opportunities that internet can perform market ETC. Uh, uh, the other version is they can just say, identify st strategic and operational risks facing the firm. They give you a case and say, identify strategic and operational risks facing the firm. Now, that is a general question. And if you close your eyes and I ask you, what are the risks facing any firm in this area, in this era? If you live out e-business, I don't know what risks you are talking about. Any firm that is operating today is exposed to the risks of not embracing e-business. And it is broken down into operational and strategic. If you don't embrace e-business, you suffer from liquidity risk. You may not generate sales to, 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 to pay cash to pay your creditors. You may not even operate as a going concern. It's a going concern risk. You, may, you, you suffer market risk, custom, your product failing to sell in the market. All these are risks. But then I ask you, was the question on e-business in the exam? You say, no, sir, there was no question on e-business. But question number three was, task number three was talking about risks. And then, and then how many marks? There were 30 marks on that task. Did you write anything about e-business? I didn't say because I was waiting for something like e-business, big data, and say, for me to figure out that way. ACCA is a bias towards that. An intelligent student must have eyes open to know where that topic is asked. And I will show you in August as we are doing revision. All right, then integration. You know, integration simply means you as a firm, you can unlock value. As a firm, you can unlock value from your digital platform. If you don't view digital platform as a separate item from the all other functions of a business, you need to integrate. We don't want MD and MD who says, oh, marketing is about for public relations. You know, they, they are MDs today who view website as a is relating to those who are public relations officers or marketing person. If you go to the MD and say, we want to hire a web specialist to, to, to optimize our search engine optimization, the CEO for our website, the MD doesn't hire. Ah, here we have the business of manufacturing cars. What is that to do with manufacturing? The real work is car manufacturing. No, no, it's no longer like that. This, we now need this MD who recognizes that digital platforms in a deep platforming operating landscape are an integral part of business operations or business model. So they should be integrated with HR, marketing, sales, finance, ETC. One way of doing that is through electronic data interchange. Another way of doing that is to embrace it as a sole platform to deliver our business model at board level. You have to embrace it like that at board level. So 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 you can you can actually you can actually see it that way. That's integration. If a customer is complaining on your Twitter page, on your Twitter account, big data analytics embracing HR production should quickly pick that up. Production manager should know this is what's customer sentiments we are getting concerning the features of our car. 
And then how can we do, do we have to train our employees to buy additional machinery? HR should know that if companies, employees are complaining on this on our short social media or digital platforms. Do we have to train to hire additional employees? ETC, finance should then be activated. So everyone, everyone should be accommodated in this particular digital platform. Not, not just to say, oh, this is for marketers. Market, those guys have started once again. No. That's the danger of having FDs who are not Gen Z. Companies should have Gen Z FDs because they are incredibly networked and they, they are so sensitive to what is happening on networks. Not to relegate that to PR personnel and, 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 and stuff. You get that. <laughs> you get that. I like it. I like it. You know, I once I once did a consultancy for a very huge company. Oh well, because of time, let me not say that. Okay, and then intelligence. What do I mean by intelligence? Um, intelligence means, uh, you know what? Your digital platform should generate enough intelligence for your decision making. Your digital, the, the platform you are using should not be like an execute to execute transactions, but also to generate intelligence so that you anticipate trends. You need to configure it with analytics. So if, if for example, a CCA website, it is configured with big data analytics software. As we as I'm opening it like this, every time I'm opening it, they, they know. Who has opened it? They know. And the, the time I took whilst it's open is called engagement time. They equally know it. They are generating intelligence from that. So if I took long and view it over and over, the, they, they may actually want to figure out who is this person and they realize is, is, the, super, is, the, is the tutor for ACC. So, they, so that, that's how it goes. So the, the, for you to expand your customer base, the platform you are using to discharge your business operation, the digital platform, be it your website, be it what, be it what. When I'm saying platform, even a mobile banking app, it's a platform which is in digital format. Even if you are not using mobile banking app, even hashtag, suppose you are using a phone which doesn't have internet, even a hashtag, star 220 hash call, that one is a digital platform. They have met, they've come up with a digital platform to accommodate those who don't even have internet. They have, they still have it. So that one should, as, as customers are using it, wherever that platform is administered, there must be intelligent generation there to anticipate who is using it. Where are they located? What is their age? That is essential for you to determine trends in the market, sentiments in the market, to proactively offer products. Because if you realize, like I showed you my YouTube, it tells me that 97% of those who are playing the videos are between 21 years and 34 years. So no wonder why at times you see me putting a, a video for jokes. It, I, I, I get this because it will tell me what other videos are these people watching. It will tell me that. So that's how, that's how it all boils up. That is called intelligence of the digital platform which is, gener which, is, which, which is being generated. And all that is being done to gather engagement. Because of the age group which is visiting this platform, there are other issues which they want to know. It, it tells you all that. Okay, and then last but not least, it's industry structure. Industry structure. What do I mean by that? You know, you can only generate, from, you can only unlock value to a large extent if the industry in general or the industry, the, the supply chain and distribution channel members that you engage, the value network that we have, they also embrace e-business. If you are the only one embracing e-business, no, and no, and not everyone else is embracing e-business, then uh, you want, you might run the risk of not getting additional benefits of 
of that e-business. I'm able to teach you online because we have access to data. And not that you have access to data on, on your own uh, evolution, but you have access to data because Econet provides data. So all these are related and supporting industries which are making e-business possible. No wonder why ACCA in certain countries, it is still often paper-based exam. They are not yet computer-based. But in other countries, it's now even offering remotely invigilated exams. In Zimbabwe, in our case, it's still offering CBE, but session-based or sender-based. But if we make improvements in internet connectivity, it can deliver that to through remote invigilation like what it attempted to do. But I'm sure if lockdowns persist, they may equally call this a remotely invigilated exam. We have to be open for all the eventualities. So for this to work, you know, value network, meaning partners we engage, they must also embrace the business. And no wonder why even first intuition is to partner with us. You know, as Atlantic Resources, we are the only college which never closed because of COVID, even for an hour. We never closed. Other colleges closed. We, at one point in Southern Africa, we were the only ones teaching ACCA for the first month of closure. And they know that. They know that. So, as, as, so it's, it's so important to know that for you to partner or to benefit from e-business, those who you engage with, you should now take an inventory of who you do business with. Lest you cry foul and say, I'm not real, I'm failing to unlock value from e-business. The issue is industry structure. Reconfigure your value networks, your supply channel and distribution members so that they also embrace e-business. Okay, you have learned quite a lot. That's what e-business entails. And in summary, what I have taught you is all you need to excel in this digitalized business world. What I have taught you is all you need to appreciate why companies which are embracing technology are on a perpetual success plan, whilst others are suffering. Don't think it's a spiritual, it's not. It's an aggressive embrace of e-business. Others are aggressive, whilst others are gradual. When you are gradual, in the phase where you are pondering on gradual embrace, you are sliding two steps back and one step forward. And notice that no business in this generation is safe. It's a Gen Z generation. Network. Someone may just like my t-shirt here and it goes viral and a lot of people are now buying the t-shirt. And you are busy with your shop selling very superior t-shirts to this one and you figure out why is it my, uh, nobody's even passing by. A lot of people are wearing this particular t It's because of the Gen Z, the generation we are in is a generation which requires also businesses to be Gen Z. Let businesses learn to network. Don't just network with your pastel accounting and your printer and your receipting machine and, and, and your Zimura fiscal tax invoice and you think I, you have networked. Those, are, those can now be done under Internet of Things, which is a just separate protocol in our broader e-business framework. You now understand all this, and I'm sure you've benefited a lot. And to the extent of having said this, now, going forward, allow me to, going forward, allow me to send you